I presented some work I, I did uh, using a new, uh, a new prototype from Brooker. Um, the idea is that uh, we're trying to look at some properties uh, by varying the magnetic field. So this is very different from what we usually do in NMR where we want to have a fixed magnetic field, high, homogeneous, in a nice cryogenic magnet. And what we want to do now is we want to explore some properties of our wide range of magnetic fields. And the cheapest way to do it in our case is just to go between our commercial Brooker high field uh, magnet all the way uh, as far as we can basically possibly all the way to the just Earth's magnetic field. So we just move our samples uh, from the heart of the magnet away as far as we need. So the properties that we are looking at uh, is what we call relaxation. Uh, relaxation is just how our, our system is going back to equilibrium with what rate. And we are looking at we are looking at this uh, this rate of uh, uh, relaxation uh, with various magnetic fields. So people have been doing that at high magnetic field for a few decades and they've studied protein motions on nanosecond and picosecond timescales using just high fields. In our case, because we are now able to vary the magnetic field, we uh, are more able to, uh, to map events that take place, in particular in this really uh, uh, difficult uh, time range of timescales that are nanoseconds. Really, the, the type of research I do, I do is very fundamental, so it's, it's far from applications, but um, if, I, if I can give you a, an example of some applications that could come down from this analysis, this fine analysis of protein dynamics, it's in the de rational design of drugs that will bind a given protein target. Uh, it's been done for a long time, starting just from studies of the structure of a, of a, of a protein. And now it turns out that it's, it's really necessary to take into account not only the structure, but also the dynamics, how the structure fluctuates in time. And so understanding much better protein dynamics will be helpful uh, for this type of uh, pharmaceutical um, applications. One type of, uh, of proteins that is quite challenging uh, and has been really uh, discovered just about, about 15 years ago are proteins that are called intrinsically disordered proteins. So when you think of a protein, you usually think of something with a nice picture, of a nice structure. But it turns out that a lot of proteins, in particular in eukaryotes, have long disordered fragments. And these fragments are disordered in vivo and in vitro. And their disorder is actually important for their function. But because they are disordered, then the, the physics of their motion is somehow quite different from that of a well-folded protein. And in that case, uh, we're, we're just trying to get as much information as we can on motions on, say, picosecond and nanosecond timescales to understand what is the, let's say, the speed at which it will explore a very complex conformational space.